Community Church. Come on in and worship with us. We waited for the day. We gathered in Your name, calling out to You. Your glory like a fire, awakening desire, will burn our hearts with truth. You're the reason we're here. You're the reason we're singing. Open up the heavens. We want to see you open up the floodgates, a mighty river flowing from your heart, filling every part of our praise. Your presence in this place, your glory's on our face, we look into the sky. Descending like a cloud, you're standing with us now, Lord, unveil our eyes. You're the reason we're here, you're the reason we're singing. Open up the heavens, we want to see you. Open up the floodgates, a mighty river flowing from your heart. Filling every part of our praise. Open up the heavens, we want to see you. Open up the floodgates, a mighty river flowing from your heart. Filling every part of our praise. Show us, show us your glory. Show us. Show us your power, show us, show us your glory, Lord. Show us, show us your glory, show us, show us your power, show us, show us your glory, Lord. Show us. Show us your glory, show us, show us your power, show us, show us your glory, Lord. Open up the heavens, we want to see you. Open up the floodgates, a mighty river flowing from your heart, filling every part of our praise. Open up the heavens, we want to see you. Open up the floodgates, a mighty river flowing from your heart, filling every part of our praise. Flowing from your heart, filling every part of our praise. Good morning. You may be seated. Welcome to Oakwood Community Church. We're so excited that you're here with us this morning. My name is Pastor Ben. Uh, just raise your hand if you love electric guitar. All right, great. That's all of us. If your hand's down, keep it up. Uh, we're excited that you're here with us this morning. I'm the youth pastor here at Oakwood Community Church, uh, which means I get to hang out with our middle schoolers, our high schoolers, and our college students. Uh, and today, our middle schoolers and high schoolers are actually headed to the beach. Woo, 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 woo. So if you uh, are going to the beach with me today, we're going to be meeting in the lobby after church. Uh, if I'm not there yet, it means I'm picking up Jimmy John's sandwiches, so you can wait for me there. Uh, I should be there shortly after we get done here today. Uh, we have some awesome things happening today. We get to hear uh, from some missionaries that we here at the church support uh, and some really awesome things happening. Uh, Petey's going to be leading us in our last message in Revelation. All right, our last message in Revelation. Uh, we're excited about that as well, but let's just pray as we get started this morning. Father, we come to you this morning excited to be here. Uh, we're thankful for the family members that are sitting around us as we spend today uh, just celebrating with you, Father. Uh, we just ask that you be present here with us, uh, that you would open our heart in a new way this morning, that as we worship you this morning, that you would be glorified. Father, we love you and we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Stand with us as we continue to worship and sing, Good God Almighty, because he is good. 
Can't count the times I've called your name some broken night And you showed up to patch me up like you do every time I get amnesia I forget that you keep coming around Yeah, ain't no way you'll ever let me down Good God Almighty, I hope you'll find me Praising your name no matter what comes Cause I know where I'll be without your mercy So I keep praising your name at the top of my lungs Tell me is he good? He's good Tell me is he God? He's God He is good God Almighty you say your love goes on forever, that your mercy never stops. So why would I assume you'd be somebody that you're not? Like sun in the morning, I know you're gonna be there every day. So what on earth could make me be afraid? Good God Almighty, I hope you'll find me. Cause I know where I'll be without your mercy So I keep praising your name at the top of my lungs Tell me is he good? He's good Tell me is he God? He's God He is good God Almighty Praise him in the morning, praise him in the noontime Praise him when the sun goes down Love him in the morning, love him in the noontime Love him when the sun goes down Praise him in the morning, praise him in the noontime Praise him when the sun goes down Love him in the morning, love him in the noontime Love him when the sun goes down Good God Almighty, I hope you'll find me Praising your name no matter what goes Cause I know where I'll be without your mercy So I keep praising your name at the top of my lungs Tell me is it good? Tell me is it God? He is good God Almighty Jesus in the morning, Jesus in the noontime, Jesus when the sun goes down. Jesus in the morning, Jesus in the noontime, Jesus when the sun goes down. Woo! Give him a hand. Praise our Lord. He is a great God. He is a great, good, good God. He is almighty and all-knowing, and he breaks every chain that could ever bind us. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Was grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear the hour I first believed. My 
chains are gone, I've been set free. My God, my Savior, has ransomed me. And like a flood, His mercy reigns, unending love, amazing Good afternoon. Welcome to the Solomon Islands. Tim and I wanted to take a chance to say hello to you and give you a few updates on our ministry. In the background behind me, you can see an island on the horizon. That's Savo Island. It's just off the coast of Honiara, Guadalcanal, where we live in the capital city. And uh, we spent a week there the first week in July walking around the island. Uh, the people on the island speak Savo Savo language and they don't have a Bible translation yet, but they'd like one. So we spent the week visiting each village and talking to them about their alphabet. Uh, we're needing to decide, help the people decide on an alphabet before we move forward with Bible translation. So that was an exciting thing to be a part of that and the people did come up with a trial alphabet. So that's the next step closer to getting a Bible translation. In about a week, I will be traveling to another island, Malaita, where I will be teaching at an Anglican seminary, doing some courses on how to use the translated scriptures. A colleague will be working on the practical side of things, uh, training in uh, how to read the scriptures, and I will be working on the theological foundations and the language use issues related to ministry. We're looking forward to that exciting opportunity as well. Thank you again, Oakwood, for your part in our ministry. We appreciate your prayers and your financial support, which allows us to be involved here in the Solomon Islands. 
helping Solomon Islanders have access to God's word in the language that they know and love best. Thank you. Thank you for your partnership. All right, if you want to stand back up with us, we can continue onwards, uh, going on with No Longer Slaves. Love this song. It just truly talks about how we're not slaves to anything anymore. We are children of God, and he just sets the path for everything in our lives, and it's just amazing. You unravel me with a melody. You surround me with a song of deliverance from my enemies till all my fears are gone. And I'm no longer a slave. I am a child of God, and I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. From my mother's womb, you have chosen me. Your love has called my name. I've been born again into your family. Your blood flows through my veins. And I'm no longer a slave. child of God and I'm no longer a slave to fear I am a child of God You split the sea so I could walk right through it My fears were drowned in perfect love Rescued me so I could stand and sing. I am a child of God. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. And I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God And I'm no longer a slave to fear I am a child of God And I'm no longer a slave to fear I am a child of God No longer a slave to fear I am a child of God And I'm no longer a slave to fear I am a child of God I am a child of God I am a child of God This next song we're going to sing, some of you may have heard, some of you may have not, it's a new one here it's a 
prayer song sung by Casting Crowns, and it's Here's My Heart. There's so many times when we just get clouded by our own messes, our own ways, our own ways of thinking, and things that we think that we need and want. But sometimes we just need to come to God and say, God, here's my heart. This is where I'm at. This is what I'm living with right now. And I give it all over to you. I give it to you, and I trust in your way and your will for my life. And it's all yours. So sing this third verse with me, and we'll continue on with it. Here's my heart, Lord. Here's my heart, Lord. Here's my heart, Lord. Speak what is true. Let's sing that again, dude. Here's my heart, Lord. Here's my heart, Lord. Here's my heart, Lord. Speak what is true. And I am found. I am yours. I am loved. I make pure. I have life. I can breathe, I am healed, I am free, here's my heart, Lord, here's my heart, Lord, here's my I am found, I am yours, I am lost, I made pure, I have life, I can breathe, I am healed, I am free, cause you are strong. You are sure, you are life, you endure, cause you are good, always true, you are light, breaking through, here's my heart. Here's my life. Here's my life, Lord. Here's my life, Lord. Here's my life, Lord. Speak what is true. Here's my heart, Lord. Give it to him. Here's my heart, Lord. Here's my heart, Lord. Speak what is true. Speak what is true. Speak what is true.
That wasn't a rousing good morning. Good morning. morning. Wasn't it nice to see our Sunshine Park kids here this morning? The older kids came. Good to have them back. Good to see that things are happening, you know, and uh, they came up specifically because Morgan was singing. You see uh, young Morgan with us this morning? Yeah. Nice to have you. You guys didn't miss your sister, did you? Okay, you were in the back. All right, that's good. Uh, Morgan uh, has always shown an interest to being on the worship team, and she asked me, when can I sing on the worship team? And, and we, we have a, a kind of a high school and up uh, policy for singing on the team regularly, but we use the summer to, to encourage that talent, and so I, I got her on the schedule to sing once this summer, and then I think we got a ukulele coming from a Benson girl, right? That's coming up sometime this, this summer at some point, uh, and so we're going to get some other people up here. And wasn't it great to see Ben up here? That was Ben Schultz. Yes, Ben Schultz on guitar. Good to have Ben with us. Just giving you names to go with faces so you get to know uh, people. So exciting to see. Uh, Everything's kind of coming back to life. Isn't it good that everything's coming back to life? Amen. Uh, It's good and it feels great and it's good to see you when you can uh, be here. Uh, It's always good when David Borst can be here, continue to pray for David's health. We did have another uh, emergency going into the hospital this week. So if you guys could be in prayer for my guitar. Um, It it, it broke last week and it's been in the hospital. So we don't know what's wrong with it. They're diagnosing it, uh, but hopefully it should be better. Besides that, I haven't heard of anything. Uh, Make sure you let the office know if uh, something is happening in your family where you could use some encouragement or a visit. I think they're letting pastors back in hospitals now. Think of that. Uh, So uh, let us know when you can, uh, if you have a need, and we'll make sure that we uh, do get to visit with you. Here we are. Unbelievable Sunday, the end of five years of work of going through the Bible, Genesis through Revelation. Um, chronologically, we kind of walk through the Bible. We didn't touch on every verse and every passage. We kind of did a helicopter hovering over certain areas, but we went through chronologically through the entire Bible. And here we are at the last two chapters, and I'm excited to kind of wrap it up, put a bow on it, finishing not only the Revelation series, but the entire uh, Bible. And I'm excited, guys. I'm excited about the future. I'm excited about next week. Uh, we're we're uh, purposely taking a totally different direction next Next week, after coming off Revelation, this new series is so, it's so uh, light and easy and it's encouraging and it's so practical. It hits you where you're at in your everyday life. It's called Win the Day. Everybody say win. win. And I think it's some great biblical truth about how we should be living our lives in every day increments. And I'll talk about that next week. And so encourage people to come. Maybe, maybe during Revelation wasn't the time you wanted to invite family or friends to come because it's heavy. Uh, but by all means, starting next week, you're going to want, you're going to be disappointed if you don't take advantage of inviting friends and neighbors and co-workers, uh, family to come with you to Oakwood. And we're excited about launching that. But let's, let's go ahead and jump into our last preaching in the uh, book of Revelation. Pray with me, would you? Would you say this prayer? You don't have to say it out loud, but just in your heart to God. God, since there's something you want me to hear, I'm willing to listen. Just give that prayer to God. God, since there's something you want me to hear, I'm willing to listen. And God, I pray that you'd be glorified. I pray that everyone hearing this message would be edified, and I pray that Satan would be horrified. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Worship, watch, and warn. The big idea for Revelation 21 and 22, hope fulfilled, heaven at last. I'm excited to preach through this last two chapters and give you a view of the eternal state. Uh, We've talked through all these things in Revelation. I'll give you that list in a second. Our key verse is Revelation 21.3. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, look, God's dwelling place is now among the people, and he will dwell with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. We'll talk about that today, about the eternal state and how it's different from what happened here on earth. But Revelation, we talk through the revelation of Jesus Christ. I remind you that it's not the revelation of Antichrist, it's not the revelation of doom and gloom. It's the revelation of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. I hope and trust that you know him as your Savior. I pray there's been a time in your life when you've talked to God and said, God, I know I'm a sinner, 
Please forgive me of my sin. Come into my life as my Savior and Lord. I pray that you've done that. It's not a magic prayer. You don't have to say it in those words. But I hope at some point you've confessed your sin, given it to Jesus, and you know that your destiny is secure. I pray that's true. If not, come and talk to us today. Uh, I'll hang around for a little bit, but I get to drive the bus to Holland today with the teens. So uh, we're, we're looking forward to going to there with them. But uh, any one of our elders are here and, and would love to talk with you, pray with you if you need to receive Christ as your own Savior. We talk through the seal judgments. We talk through the trumpet judgments and the bowl judgments, the fall of Babylon. And we've talked through the second coming of Christ. And then we talked about the millennium and the great white throne, and we wrap up the whole series today with the eternal state. And we'll talk a little bit about uh, what that kind of looks like and the glory that's there. So let's start by reading Revelation 21. Are you there? Open up a Bible or a gadget, get it on. Uh, There are Bibles in various seats underneath in the baskets throughout the worship center. Revelation 21, let's read, we'll do it in chunks today, but let's read verses 1 through 8. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. There was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride beautifully dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Look, God's dwelling place is now among the people, and he will dwell with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain. For the old order of things has passed away. He who was seated on the throne said, I am making everything new. Then he said, write this down for these are the words or for these words are trustworthy and true. He said to me, it is done. I am the alpha and omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give water without cost from the spring of the water of life. Those who are victorious will inherit all of this. And I will be their God and they will be my children. But the cowardly, the unbelieving, the vile, the murderers, the sexual immoral, those who practice magic arts, the idolaters and all liars, they will be consigned to the fiery lake of burning sulfur. This is the second death. Let's walk through And look at what we have here, the promise of all things new. There's a new system in verses 1 and 2. It's the elimination of the present temporary system. What we have here, uh, terra firma, earth, and the heavens, and I don't want you to be confused when we use that word. I think there's uh, some misconception about heaven and the heavens, right? The heavens declare the glory of God, right? And the firmament showeth his handiwork. That's talking about the heavens, the actual space above the earth, right? That's the heavens, but it's not heaven, capital H, heaven. You get that, don't you? Oh, there's so much confusion on that. I, I know, I, I, I drive people nuts here because words matter. And, and as a pastor, I try to teach what the Bible says. And, and they, 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 I remember early on when I came here, and we talked about the office of elder and the office of deacon. And, and I had to explain that everybody in the church, deacons, deacon means serve. The word deacon means to serve. Everybody deacons. And that's why uh, Phoebe was a deaconess and, and other people mentioned were deaconesses and deacons. And, but it didn't mean they held the office of deacon. And so words matter, capitals matter, whether it's a, a noun or if it's just an adjective or a verb. And so when we get to the word heaven and heavens, don't be confused by that. We'll talk about heaven today, the eternal state. But the elimination happens of this present temporary system. The Bible indicates that this earth And the heavens are destroyed. Hopefully we have these little subtext on screen. 1 Peter 3, 10 through 13. For whoever would love life and see good days must keep their tongue from evil and their lips from deceitful speech. They must turn from evil and do good. They must seek peace and pursue it. For the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and his ears are attentive to their prayer. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. Who is going to harm you if you are eager to do good? That's a really good passage, but it has nothing to do with what we're talking about. Um, I don't know if we got a wrong text that was printed there and shown on the screen. But it shows, Scripture tells us that this earth and, and the heavens above this earth are going to be destroyed. This temporary system is not meant to be eternity. 
There's an introduction in verses 1 through 3 um, of uh, the holy city. Not to be confused with Jerusalem here on earth, that's going to be all passed away. And, and the new city, it's a holy city, and it's often referred to as Jerusalem. Uh, but it's used in, in a term kind of just to give it an idea that it is God's holy city, God's holy place. Do we have John 14, 1 through 3? Let's just find out what this verse says and if it has anything to do with what we're preaching about. Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. My Father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, I would have told you that. I'm going there to prepare a place for you. Remember, that's why I've told you, Scripture makes it clear that heaven is a future place. And, and that's why I said Grandma's not in heaven. Capital H, heaven. That's a future thing. Nobody technically is in heaven heaven. Uh, believers that have passed are in paradise. They're with the Lord. You can call that heaven if you want to, but we're talking today in these two, two uh, chapters about the actual literal place that Jesus has gone to prepare for us. He's making this brand new thing for us, this holy city. And then uh, let's move on to the new blessing, verses three through seven. Uh, we hear here that the presence of God is enjoyed forever. One thing that's different about heaven, future heaven, when this earth and heavens are passed away, when we enter into the new holy city, one thing that's different about that is the presence of God will be enjoyed forever. It also lets us know in this, the most famous passage in Revelation probably is the elimination of tears, death, sorrow, crying, and pain. That's a wonderful thought, that in the eternal state, we won't have to worry about death and sorrow and pain. I don't think um, we're going to be worried any longer about things that happened here. I don't think we're going to be in sorrow for things that happened here. That is all going to be past and gone, and we're only going to be in a state of joy and peace. There will be none of these things. We'll receive the promised inheritance. The Bible often told believers, you have a promised inheritance. First Peter 1 and verse 4. And into an inheritance they can never perish, spoil or fade. This inheritance is kept in heaven for you. That is so huge. Somebody say amen. amen. Never spoil and fade. Everything here is sin cursed. Everything. How many of you love mosquitoes? You just love those boogers. I mean, man, we have pests and we have uh, nuisances and, and, and it's just a pain. We, I, I paid money to have them come kill the mosquitoes, eradicate those evil beasts from Satan. You know, I know, I know the Bible says that the locusts are going to come from the abyss, but I think he's going to probably send a couple mosquitoes too because they annoy people and they hurt people. They're vicious and, and we, we pay money. We just pay to eliminate. We plant gardens, right, Ed? Ed, my whole garden got ate. We did. We went out there to look. Everything in my garden has been eaten. We've got a, not the garlic. I, I, we got the garlic. But <laughs> we got a fence. I got a fence. A metal fence. We found the culprit's little footprints. It's a baby deer. A baby deer jumped my fence and ate all the food. Dirty dog. Everything here spoils and fades everything deteriorates and goes bad. We do too. How many of you are over 50? Amen. All right, you know, keep your hands up. Don't do it. Don't be embarrassed. We're the ones. We're the ones. We're survivors. Come on. How many of you guys are under 40? You don't know. No. How many are liars too? I see. I saw that hand in the back. And I saw a liar. It's just saying, oh, we wish we were under 40. And, and those people under 40, have you ever been around somebody under 40 and they talked about being sore? I walked in the other day and Philip, our worship guy on guitar, he was, he was kind of limping. He's limping. And I'm like, oh, no, did you hurt yourself? He said, no, nah, my workout yesterday was too hard. I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> shut up. You know, when you're over 50, we don't work out. We hurt anyway. We get the pain and the stiffness and the sorrow without any of that good stuff. I mean, oh, the Bible promises an inheritance for us where there is no more sorrow, no more tears, no more death, no more crying, but also there's no more decay of things. Oh, there'll be passing of time. I don't want you to be, uh, we'll talk about eternity today and how confusing it is, a hard to concept foreverness, but a foreverness where there's no more 
aging and decaying. And I talked to my dad on the phone yesterday. He's in his 80s, and he goes to his doctor and complains. And his doctor says, you're alive, aren't you? Stop complaining. Good for you. You're still alive. Be happy. Every time you have an ache, remember, it's because you're alive, you know? And, and aging isn't for wimps. It isn't. It isn't for wimps to get old and to decay and to this, this tent, this old tent we live in. And we need to recognize that as a tent, you know, like that's what Pastor Bob said in his last days. That old tent was full of holes and it got as much out of it as he could, but it was over. And he got to enter into glory, into the presence of Christ. And he's living in that state already where there is no more sorrow, no more death, no more tears, no more pain, no more aging. Oh, we ought, to, we ought to look forward to that eternal state and know that it's coming. It's a promise received. In this passage, it talked about the destiny of the lost. Again, you thought, oh, I thought we were clear of that. We've been talking about the lake of fire now for several weeks, but always in Scripture, they always, there's a contrast. We always want to juxtapose the eternal destiny of believers with those that are not believers. And so the destiny of lost is talked about there. Their destiny is the eternity in the lake of fire. And then we get to the description of the holy city. Wow. Let me read it. It's fun. Revelation 21, 9 through 22, 5. One of the seven angels who had the seven bowls full of the seven last plagues came and said to me, Come, I will show you the bride, the wife of the Lamb. And he carried me away in the spirit to a mountain great and high and showed me the holy city Jerusalem coming down out of heaven. Not of the heavens, but out of heaven from God. It shone with the glory of God, and its brilliance was like that of very precious jewel, like jasper, clear as crystal. It had a great high wall with 12 gates and with 12 angels at the gates. On the gates were written the names of the 12 tribes of Israel. There were three gates on the east, three on the north, three on the south, three on the west. The wall of the city had 12 foundations, and on them were the names of the twelve apostles of the Lamb. The angel who talked with me had a measuring rod of gold to measure the city, its gates, and its walls. The city was laid out like a square, as long as it was wide. He measured the city with the rod and found it to be 12,000 stadia in length, as wide and high as it is long. The angel measured the wall using human measurement, and it was 144 cubits thick. The wall was made of jasper, and the city of pure gold, as pure as glass. The foundation of the city walls were decorated with every kind of precious stone. The first foundation was jasper, the second sapphire, the third agate, the fourth emerald, the fifth onyx, the sixth ruby, the seventh chrysolite, not crystal light, but chrysolite, the eighth beryl, the ninth topaz, the tenth turquoise, the eleventh jacinth, the twelfth amethyst, The twelve gates were twelve pearls, each gate made of a single pearl. The great street of the city was of gold, as pure as transparent glass. Let's talk about this great city, the holy city. Again, it's called the New Jerusalem. It's, It's not Jerusalem over in Israel, but it is the new holy city of God. That's the title. Her walls... Now, this is where there's some confusion when you try to interpret Scripture. There's a lot of literal translation here, and and I believe most of it is to be translated literally. Uh, The question is, are the walls 216 feet thick, or are they 216 feet high? Uh, Different people translate that differently. I I don't know. All I know is there's some big gates, and those are some big pearls. And, And if you're having problems thinking, well, these they can't be a single pearl. I mean, if you have a hard time imagining God making a 216-foot pearl, then do you believe he made the globe you're sitting on and the earth that we're walking on, the the air that we're breathing? And if you think that's too difficult for God, uh, I don't have a problem with that. If you don't want to take that literally and just think John's describing something, what he saw in earthly terms, that's okay. All I know is he's really letting us know this is quite something. Whether it's 216 feet thick as as a wall or if it's 216 feet high, all I know is we got some dimensions and we should be overwhelmed. Her measurements are 
Think of this, a 1,500-mile cube, the Stadia thing was there, and I want to give you an explanation of that. Now, there's different understandings of this, too. Isn't it amazing? Humans read this, and they have different opinions, right? And so, I think it's a cube. By the way, the temple, the Holy of Holies in Israel was a cube in size, and there's a lot of combination of talking about what was in the old versus what in the new. But some people believe it's, a, it's like a pyramid with God at the top of the pyramid. And so either way, it gives room for that. Whether this is a 1,500 mile cube or it's a 1,500 mile base that goes to a point, I don't think it really matters. It's enormous. Do you have any idea how big this new heaven is for us, this dwelling place, this wonderful place? Do you have any concept of how large a 1,500-mile cube is? I did some things to help you. Planes fly at 30,000 feet, roughly. You ever been in a big jet airliner? You go up. Don't even talk about that today. I don't know how we get these big metal things to fly. But they go up in the air 30,000 feet. 30,000 feet. That's nothing when we're talking about 1,500 miles. So let's go to what's happened in the last couple of weeks. Bezos shot up into space with his billions of dollars, and he went to a height of 350,000 feet. Well, that just slams 30,000 feet. Airplanes are nothing. Bezos can go 350,000 feet. That's 66 miles up. Did you hear that? Bezos just spent billions of dollars and shot up into space, 66 miles in the sky. And eternity in heaven is 1,500 miles high. Wow. Are there going to be buildings that high? Or is gravity not a thing? Does it matter? I don't know, but there's a lot of room. There's a lot of room for you and for me. And there's probably room to invite some more people, don't you think? Probably ought to get on that. 1,500 that's a lot of space. There's a lot of room. When Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you, he's not just building a, an extra room. He's building this beautiful, wonderful place. That's huge. If you're worried that I left out Mr. Branson, Mr. Branson only flew 282,000 feet up. That was only 53 miles up. Got billionaires. They're, they're fighting for who's going to... And Jesus is like, woohoo! <laughs> you know, uh, We've got an eternity that's immeasurably more than you can imagine. That's the measurements of this holy city. Her materials are precious stones. I read the list of incredible precious stones. We, we, we hear about a street of gold. How many have ever heard that growing up? You've heard about the streets of gold. And, and you concept that when the Bible says it's so pure, you can see through it. What? We don't know anything about that kind of purity of gold. But that's, it, it, it talks about the beauty of what's being built for us in eternal state. But here's the thing I wanted to point out. Where's her temple? Where's the church? Where's the building? Where do we go to worship God? And here's the answer. There is no temple in heaven. The Bible makes it clear there's no need for a temple in heaven. That's why it's different than here. Here, there was a temple in Israel, a holy of holies where God's presence rested and only the high priest could enter in once a year. And we've heard about that. We've heard about it being such a holy place that if he walked in with sin, he'd be struck dead. The Holy of Holies was this, this little cube, but God's presence dwelt there. You had to go to the temple. Remember when Jesus met that woman at the well and they had a little discussion about where to worship? Well, that's a man-made thing. Where do we worship? How do we worship? Where do we got to go? And, and some of you might be in that same trap today. I go to Oakwood. This is where I worship. I come on Sunday for an hour, and it's the holy time of the week, and it's no longer that. You are the temple of God. We are the body of Christ, and you don't have to come to a location. That's why I know, I know several people have, have asked, why don't we give more invitations? Why don't we invite people to come down? And, and I just don't want you to have a mentality that you have to be in this place at these steps to be with God. Because that would be an awful restrictive thing. We're no longer in the temple worship stage. We're in the stage now where Christ dwells in you and you are the priest. And, and you can go to God anywhere at any time. I'm not against invitations, and we will give invitations from time and time, but I don't want you to think that this is the altar by which you have to come. You can pray in your heart today to receive Christ where you sit 
or maybe on the way home, or maybe this week you're listening to a podcast. God will work in your heart. And what's beautiful about eternal, the eternal state of heaven is there is no temple to go to because we are going to be continuously in the presence of God. No more need to go to a building. No more need to go to a place. That's the eternal state. Her light, the Bible talks about there's no need for a light there. I think uh, I got to read further, don't I? Let's, let's read further into 22. Twenty-two. Let me read twenty-two. I did not see a temple in the city because the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are its temple. The city does not need the sun or the moon to shine on it, for the glory of God gives its light, and the Lamb is its lamp. The nations will walk by its light, and the kings of the earth will bring their splendor into it. On no day will its gates ever be shut, for there will be no night there. The glory and honor of the nations will be brought into it. Nothing impure will ever enter it, nor will anyone who does what is shameful or deceitful, but only those whose names are written in the Lamb's book of life. Then the angel showed me a river of the water of life. We're in Revelation 22. We just entered into the last chapter of the Bible. As clear as crystal flowing from the throne of God and the Lamb, down the middle of the great city, the street of the city, on each side of the river stood the trees of life, bearing 12 crops of fruit, yielding its fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree are for healing of the nations. No longer will there be any curse. The throne of God and the Lamb will be in the city, and His servants will serve Him. They will see His face, and His name will be on their foreheads. There will be no more night. There will be no need for the light of a lamp or the light of the sun, for the Lord God will give them light, and they will reign forever and ever. As we continue on to talk about it, there's no need for a temple. The light, there's no need for the sun to shine because the glory of God will filled, will radiate uh, the location, and her life flows out of the throne. This life that flows out of, it comes from God and from Jesus. Uh, right now, when we live in this temporary planet, the rivers of life bring life. I mean, that's where the cities grew up, because water brings life. And it talks about the life and the tree there, the tree that he it spans from this whole river there. And, and, the, and by the way, this is where we know that there is time in heaven. There is time in eternity. It's not timeless because that tree bears 12 different fruits, one each month. And so there's time marked out in heaven. Eternity is time. And, and it's not timeless. Isn't that hard to understand eternity? Do you, do you stop and think about forever? We have a hard time as temporary people. Um. Uh, why don't you come help me? I'm going to borrow you. Why don't you go stand right by that chair over there? So I do this with my family from time to time, and it drives them nuts. Uh, it's probably going to drive some of you nuts today, too. Well, come halfway to me, would you? Come halfway. All right. All right, stop. All right, come, come halfway. Just come half the way. Yep. Come half there. Yep, just half. Okay, good. Good. All right, you can come halfway. Just come halfway. Don't come all the way. Just half. Okay, come halfway. Yep, just halfway. All right, now keep coming halfway. Now, if we keep doing this, do you realize he will never, ever reach me? How many of you understand that concept? How many of you are like my wife and my son and you think that's the stupidest thing you've ever seen or heard? <laughs> Some of you are sitting there going, well, yeah, he's going to get there. Okay, come halfway. Come, you can come halfway. No, keep, another half. Come, come halfway. <laughs> come halfway. See, you get it, don't you? If he keeps coming halfway to me, we can do this forever. He'll never reach me. You're like, he's going to reach you. He's really close. He'll... Not if he only comes halfway. Everybody say halfway. halfway. Thank you. You can go sit down. That's going to drive some of you nuts. My wife is actually angry as she's sitting there because she hates that. She hates that. She tells me all the time, of course he'll get there. He has to get there. He's so close. But not if he only goes halfway. Eternity is kind of like this if you think about that. It never ends. There, eternity is foreverness. And, and it's hard for us to concept foreverness. But there's life there that flows from God. Everything flows from him. And 
The God of heaven, obviously, is God and Jesus on their thrones. I'm sure the Holy Spirit is thrown in there, but the Bible specifically mentions God and the Lamb are there. And then we come to the closing of this book, the epilogue, chapter 22, verses 6 through 21. Let me read it. The angel said to me, these, are the word, these words are trustworthy and true. The Lord, the God who inspires the prophets, sent his angels to show his servants the things that must soon take place. Look, I am coming soon. Blessed is the one who keeps the words of these prophecies written in the scroll. I, John, am the one who heard and saw these things. And when I heard and seen them, I fell down to worship at the feet of an angel who had been showing them to me. But he said to me, don't do that. I am a fellow servant with you and with your fellow prophets and with all who keep the words of this scroll. Worship God. Worship, watch, and warn. Verse 10, then he told me, do not seal up the words of the prophecy in this school because the time is near. Let the one who does wrong continue to do wrong. Let the vile person continue to be vile. Let the one who does right continue to do right. And let the holy person continue to be holy. Look, I'm coming soon. My reward is with me. I will give to each person according to what they have done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Blessed are those who wash their robes so that they may have the right to the tree of life and may go through the gates into the city outside of the dogs who practice magic arts sexual morality murderers idolaters and everyone who loves and practices falsehood i jesus have sent my angel to give you this testimony for the churches i am the root of the offspring of david and the bright and morning star the spirit and the bride say come let the one who hears say, come. Let the one who's thirsty, come. Let the one who wishes to take the free gift of the water of life, come. I warn anyone, everyone who hears the words of the prophecy of this scroll, if anyone adds anything to them, God will add to that person the plagues described in this scroll. If anyone takes words away from the scroll of prophecy, God will take away from that person any share in the tree of life and in the holy city, which are described in the scroll. And he who testified to these things says, yes, I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. And I'm going to save the last verse for the final. <laughs> what do we have here as we wrap it up? We have the book and the blessing. We're reminded again that it's faithful and true. What was written is accurate and meant for our blessing. It's of divine origin. It says that God gave this. John said, I wrote it, but God showed me it. He showed me and I heard these things. It's prophetic. It's talking about things that are yet to come. It's awe-inspiring. We can't help but to read through this and be in awe of God's power his supremacy, his sovereignty. And the things that will come will come because God says they will come. And then we, we hear about the saved and the unsaved. Once again, we juxtapose the two different destinies. Those of those who've been washed, their clothes have been washed. None of us are clean. None of us can come to God's holy city on our own merit. Please don't let the world trick you into religiosity which teaches that if your good deeds outweigh your bad deeds, then God's not going to do that. There is no scale of justice that God's going to say, no, you're good enough. Well, what's good enough? Honestly, I, I don't want to go into eternity hoping I was good enough. There is no way on our own that we can stand before God pure. In Revelation, at the very end, there's an invitation again, and it says, wash your clothes. Those white, clean robes, and it refers to righteousness. The only way we're going to be robed in righteousness is if we can get Jesus' righteousness. And the only way you can get that is if you ask him to forgive your sins and come into your life. The Bible says, again, there's a great exchange. He became sin who knew no sin that we might become the righteousness of God. Again, I'm expecting there's a day. I'm expecting I'm going to meet my Savior. And I'm expecting a holy God to ask me who's paying for the sin. And my plan is to point at Jesus and say, I ask Jesus to forgive me of my sin. And the beauty of that moment is he doesn't look at Don Jackson's sinfulness any longer. God's eyes will not look into all that didn't measure up, his eyes will immediately go to his son. And he's going to look directly at his son and say, Don Jackson, you are perfect and pure. Why? Because I get all of Christ's righteousness. 
because he became all of Don Jackson's sinfulness on the cross. Have you experienced that exchange yet in your life? Have you asked him to save you? Do that. The Bible says as we wrap up, do that. Let, let the person who is in need ask and you will find salvation. And then as we looked at that, the saved have eternal access to the holy city and the tree of life. By no means do we want to present that the holy city has these gates and the unsaved are kind of outside trying to break in. Don't get that imagery. The, what John is trying to portray here, and he said it earlier, there is no evil that's ever going to enter into this holy eternal state. No, nothing evil will ever enter in again. Sin has been taken care of. It's dealt with. It's forever gone. Sin nature is destroyed. In this eternal state, there isn't going to be sin nature in heaven. And so we don't need to worry about that. There's a contrast between the saved and the unsaved, access and no access. The, the unsaved do not get access. They don't even get to the gate. Uh, the Bible is basically letting you know that they do not get access. We have access into the holy city. And so there's the juxtapose again. The unsaved have no access. They're condemned to that lake of fire. There's the invitation and the warning. And it's sent to the churches I want to remind you who this letter was sent to. John wrote this, but it was sent to believers. And in this, there's the warning, and apparently it becomes very true that even churchgoers might not be saved. And we got to take that seriously. Don't forget, this, this book isn't written to the unsaved of the world. It's written to the church itself. And in there is a warning saying, make sure that you've been washed. Last week, we had the chairs on stage. You can't get into heaven on a borrowed faith. Don't show up in front of a holy God and say, well, boy, my grandpa was holy. My grandpa was a great man of God. God's not asking you about your grandpa. You can't say, mom, mom and dad were leaders at the church I was at. They served. You, he, he's not wanting to know about mom and dad's faith. It's going to be you individually before a holy God. Do you own your faith? Is it yours? The warning is there. The invitation and the warning, it's sent to the churches. The possibility exists that professing churchgoers could actually be unsaved. And there's a solemn warning not to tamper with God's word, which I take very seriously all the time. Whenever I read those warnings, it, it makes me... <sighs> I would never knowingly stand on this stage and present something that's wrong. Have I ever been wrong about something? Probably. But not knowingly try to deceive you. Never do that. Some people uh, are presenting some untruths that go against Scripture, and, and, and the warning sends chills up my spine for them. They have no part of the kingdom, it says. So there's this warning there not to mess with God's Word. And then there's a promise in the prayer. Jesus is coming soon. Even so, come Lord Jesus. And then let's read it. Band, you can make your way up here. Whew. We're at... The final words of Scripture. The grace. Everybody say grace. grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus be with God's people. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. And with that, we have walked through the Bible. Let's pray. Father God, thank You for Your Word, faithful and true. Something that we can count on we can look to god revelation was very difficult father in your wisdom uh, not all things are revealed clearly here and there's room for other interpretations I, I get that father and i pray that all of us would humble ourselves when we approach your word but father there are some things in scripture that are very clear that no one could tamper with the need of a savior the provision of a savior these things are so clear god help us not to get mired deeply into the things that are hard to understand, but help us to live daily out of the things that are clear to understand. So Father, help us to be kingdom people. Looking forward to that eternal state, that eternal place, Father, where you reign and your son with you, and there is no more tears, no more sorrow, no more death. And God, I just, I pray for that day, but in the meantime, help us to be inviting people, welcoming people into the family of God. I pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Stand with us as we sing and open up at heavens again. Waited for this day, 
We're gathered in your name, calling out to you. Your glory like a fire, awakening desire, will burn our hearts with truth. You're the reason we're here. You're the reason we're singing. Open up the heavens, we want to see you. Open up the floodgates, a mighty river flowing from your heart, filling every part of our praise. Your presence in this place, your glory on our face, we're looking to the sky. Descending like a cloud, you're standing with us now. Lord, unveil our eyes. You're the reason we're here. You're the reason we're singing. Open up the heavens, we want to see you. Open up the floodgates, a mighty river flowing from your heart, filling every part of our praise. Open up the heavens, we want to see you. Open up the floodgates, a mighty river flowing from your heart, filling every part of our praise. Show us, show us your glory, show us, show us your power, show us, show us your glory, Lord. Show us, show us your glory, show us, show us your power, show us, show us your glory, Lord. Show us, show us your glory, show us, show us your power, show us, show us your glory, Lord. Open up the heavens, we want to see you, open up the floodgates, a mighty river flowing from your heart. Filling every part of our praise. Open up the heavens, we want to see you. Open up the floodgates, a mighty river flowing from your heart. Filling every part of our praise. Flowing from your heart, filling every part of our praise. I wouldn't I wouldn't really punch you in the face by the way but it is annoying as I'll get out so <laughs> oh friends what a great day what a great celebration I hope and trust the gospel project has been good for you and you've learned things and then I encourage you to stick with us let's see what the new adventure is as we turn a page and we move forward uh, and we move on in God's word God bless have a great day I'm heading to the beach get out of here open up the heavens we want to see you open up the floodgates a mighty river flowing from your heart filling every part of our praise open up the heavens we want to see you open up the floodgates a mighty river flowing from your heart filling every part of our praise open up the heavens we want to see you open up the floodgates a mighty river flowing from your heart filling every part of our praise flowing from your heart